Well, welcome to another Daily God Conversation, and this is episode number six. We've been going through the uh, the book of Acts so far and just really been having a great time. And what we're going to do is, in case you're just joining us for the first time, is for the next 10 minutes or so, uh, we're going to read a short passage of scripture from Acts, and I'm just going to give a few thoughts, uh, maybe some different perspectives. It is not meant to be uh, completely you know, exhaustive by any means. And then what we're going to do, and this is really kind of the whole idea of this God conversation today, is we're going to end with a big question or two. And these are meant to be prompts for your God conversations today. And you can have those with anyone and everyone in your life. Because the truth is, if God is the center of our life. Shouldn't he also be the center of our conversations? So let's go ahead and reclaim our day, reclaim our life today, reclaim our conversations, and put God in the middle of them as we spark a daily God conversation for today. So, Here we go. We're going to dive into uh, Acts chapter 2. We've had a lot go on, and rather than summarize it all, I'll just say if if you're just joining us, at the very least, go back probably an episode or two and start there uh, to kind of give some context as to where we are, because really, we're jumping into the middle of a speech. And so to at least get the beginning of the speech or why that speech was prompted in the first place, uh, go back probably to episode four and at least start there and work your way back to here. Again, these are only 10, 12 minutes or so, so it shouldn't take you an incredible long period of time, and uh, you can catch up with us that way. So let's dive into Acts chapter 2, verse 22, and we're going to end at verse 37. I'm reading out of the CSB or the Christian Standard Bible. Uh, It's just becoming one of my favorites, so that's where I'm at. If you're reading something else, uh, I'll try to my best to throw in some uh, verses so that you can at least follow through uh, a little bit easier. So let's start right here in verse 22 of Acts chapter 2. And this is Peter speaking, and he is in the middle of this speech. And he says, fellow Israelites, listen to these words. This Jesus of Nazareth was a man attested to you by God with miracles, wonders, and signs that God did among you through him, just as you yourselves know. Though he was delivered up according to God's determined plan and foreknowledge, you used lawless people to nail him to a cross and kill him. In verse 24, God raised him up, ending the pains of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by death. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me, because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. Moreover, my flesh will rest in hope, because you will not abandon me in Hades, or allow your Holy One to see decay. You have revealed the paths of life to me. You will fill me with gladness in your presence. Verse 29, brothers and sisters, I can confidently speak to you about the patriarch David. He is both dead and buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn an oath to him to seat one of his descendants on his throne. See what was to come. He sp- or excuse me, seeing what was to come, he spoke concerning the resurrection of the Messiah. He was not abandoned in Hades, and his flesh did not experience decay. Verse 32. God has raised this Jesus. We are all witnesses of this. Therefore, since he has been exalted to the right hand of God and has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit, 
he has poured out what you both see and hear. For it was not David who ascended to the heavens, but he himself says, the Lord declared to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know with certainty that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. And finally, in verse 37, when they heard this, they were pierced to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, what should we do? It's a little bit longer of a passage than uh, what we normally do, but I couldn't honestly find a way to really break that up. Felt like it had to stay together. But right here, we see Peter is being used as a witness. You know, if we jump back a few episodes, jump back to, uh, it'd be Acts 1.8. There's this whole uh, Jesus giving this great commission, as we now call it, saying, go into, all, go into all the world, to the ends of the earth, and be my witness. Peter here is being used as a witness. It is the great commandment being fulfilled. Notice he didn't prepare this speech. He just stood up because he knew he had to. He stood up and he opened his mouth and the Holy Spirit takes it from there. And Peter, and man, this is one of the things I love so much about this and what we're going to continue to see through Acts, through different people other than just Peter. Peter didn't hold back. He didn't mince words. He didn't make this easy to digest or easy for others to hear. He spoke boldly in truth and in confidence. It was the real but harsh truth that needed to be said. He straight up assigns blame for Jesus being killed, God in the flesh being killed. And he says, all of us are to blame. The Romans are to blame. The high priest is to blame. The uh, religious elite are to be blamed. You are to be blamed. I am to be blamed. Another thing I like about this is he's not trying to be persuasive. He's not trying to get people to believe his message. He is simply saying what he has witnessed. He's telling a story. Hey, by the way, everyone, I know you're all curious because of what's going on here after Pentecost. But let me tell you a story. And this is what I've witnessed in the last three and a half years of my life, following this man named Jesus. To Peter, it is so true and so real, he doesn't need to convince or to persuade. He just tells his story, period. It's the crowd in verse 37. It's the crowd that wants to know more. Like Peter kind of like drops the mic, sits down. He's like, all right, well, told my story. Like, that's what I know. And it's the crowd saying, what do we do now? Brothers, what do we do now? How can we move forward? And that's when Peter stands back up and gives the next piece that we will cover in the next episode. But Peter's goal was not to be persuasive. His goal was not to see thousands start to believe and follow Jesus. He just tells the story. And these people are seeing the miraculous happen in front of them as different languages are being spoken by those who didn't know them into languages that these thousands of people from around the world can now understand. So it's the truth of Jesus and our response to Jesus, coupled with what they've seen and what they're currently experiencing on Pentecost, and the truth of who Jesus really is. And Peter's kind of putting all of that together. So what does this mean for us? Well, here's a couple of God conversation starters for you today. And I think these are pretty tough. And I've kind of asked them 
a little bit a few episodes ago, but I feel like they need to be kind of repeated and they are questions worth going over again, even if it's a little bit of a different way. But question number one, do you trust the Holy Spirit, AKA God, do you trust enough to share your story? Do you trust God enough to share your story, to jump into perhaps that uncomfortable uh, moment and share your story, even if it is harsh and difficult for someone else to... Look, the story of God starts with all of us being sinners. And so the proper way to even present the gospel always starts with the fact that anyone that you are talking to or with, including yourself, is a sinner, period. That's the harsh truth, that we too killed Jesus. Do you trust the Holy Spirit enough to just share your story as is? And then secondly, and this might be a little bit of an easier question, um, and maybe this is the real conversation starter in a way, is do you find it encouraging or perhaps you find it more difficult to know that God will give you the right words to speak at the right time and it's not your job to prepare nor to persuade? In other words, if we trust, if we trust God enough to share our story, do you find it encouraging or discouraging to know that God will give you the right words and that it's not necessarily our job to persuade. God can fight his own battles. The Holy Spirit can convict a heart without our help. He can do whatever needs to be done. I know just a few days ago, I was listening to uh, one of my favorite podcasts and I hadn't listened to it for a while. And there was a conversation taking place between two people who I look up to. And they were not talking about anything at all really regarding what I was going through. But all of a sudden, that conversation, God used that conversation about something else to get me to think about something different. God used that moment to spark a different thought and conversation that I needed to have. And that I had to press pause and enter into just this time of prayer with God as he became my therapist to go through some stuff. Do we trust that God can truly do anything and everything without our help? And is that comforting or not? So those are kind of the two conversation starters. And it really just comes down to trust. How much can we trust God in our daily life, in our daily life? conversations. And so there it is, our God conversation of the day. And as you know, uh, we encourage you, I encourage you to continue this conversation forward. And there are groups that will meet and uh, every week and get together and kind of review uh, a week's worth of these uh, conversations and just share their conversations throughout the week. And if you would like to be a part of one of those uh, conversations, let me know if you are local to me, which is in uh, Western Iowa. You can join some of our groups that are meeting, or you can start your own group wherever you are. And in fact, if you are wanting to do that, we may have some other kind of materials and things that we can uh, put in your hands and give you so that you can uh, just have those conversations. Uh, Not that you have to have that stuff to do it, but for one, we'd love to know that you're doing it. And two, if we can help you at all, and I can just send some other stuff to you to help you out, we would love to do that. Uh, Also, uh, we are available. This is available via video on our YouTube page, Frontiers Church. Uh, Often you can see it also on uh, social media, and you'll see posts on Facebook and Instagram. Follow us at Frontiers Church on both of those sites. Or you can also listen via podcast. Uh, how 
however you listen to podcasts, whatever source you use, we will be there. If we are not there, let me know and I will make sure we get there. So you can look up on YouTube and uh, certainly on podcasts and God Conversations. Just look us up. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, follow, whatever. It certainly helps us. You can also get this right away when they come out fresh and new. Uh, but also it just helps us with being able to let others see this. Please continue this conversation online if you can, uh, because I want to be a part of that with you too, if I can. So uh, thank you so much for listening. I hope you have some great God conversations today. And uh, until next time, I just want to let you know, I love you. I care about you. Uh, I'm praying for you and uh, just want you to know all of those things. So We'll see you next time and God bless.